there's some requests for like an advanced link demonstration and uh, how to run VSP arrow from the command line and um, stuff like that. So running VSP arrow from the command line is a relatively simple uh, demonstration. So um, I've actually been playing around with it uh, a little bit here for the purpose of putting together a different demonstration. So running VSP arrow from the command line is just a matter of you know pulling open a console window and if you happen to do a change directory over to where uh, OpenVSP is and in, is installed, is you know where it's located, you can just run uh, VSP arrow using VSP arrow space file name underscore digengeom enter if you want to do a, a VLM mode. Now that's all predicated on the fact that you have already made your degenerate geometry, you have your uh, VSP arrow input files. But they're pretty easy to figure out what's going on. So I've got um, my notepad editor here. And these are some more, you know, advanced um, VSP arrow input files. But the stuff that you, you really will focus on are things like your reference area. All of this stuff is automatically generated by the GUI, depending on whether you're running steady or unsteady and the type of run. So if you want an easy way to get started, run it from the GUI once, let it build all these things for you, then go in and start tweaking things in an editor, save the file, and then you can run from command line. And that'll save you a whole bunch of headaches. So for the example here, if you want to run from somewhere not the OpenVSP directory, you give it uh, in quotes, you use the path, so C blah 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 blah, all the way out to where VSP arrow exe is, put a quote around that, give it whatever options you want. In this case, I'm running OMP with eight processors, and I'm telling it an unsteady run in this case, and then I tell it where my file is. So again, C blah 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 blah, drop pod degenerate geometry, and then that will execute VSP arrow from the command line. So it's pretty easy to call. You can do the same thing with, say, VSP viewer. If I were to go up and change VSP arrow to VSP viewer, you know, get rid of this and tell it to call this, it will bring up the open VS or the VSP arrow viewer for me. Um, so that's uh, kind of a, a crash course into how you can execute VSP arrow from the command line. Um, there are a lot more options available than might be inherent to the GUI. And what should happen here is if I get rid of all the options and just tell, you know, run VSP arrow exe, it will give you some extra information here. So it tells you that you can run in processes. It'll give you the option to do your stability derivatives. In that case, that is your um, seven iterations on things like alpha, beta, Mach number, um, any control surface deflections and things like that that you have in there. That's what the stab is for. Um, and then you can override um, free stream values and paste that in. You can set up restart cases. You can do uh, geometry without doing any solving. So this is kind of like doing a digengeom or a try. You can tell it to ignore wakes. You know, all the options are here. You can even plug in uh, no vortex, um, turn on or off the leading edge suction, or you can do uh, a rotor analysis. Now this is different than doing something akin to a, um, like a full unsteady rotating blade type thing. This takes your entire geometry and cranks it around the x-axis and spins it, the whole thing. So it's just rotor RPM. So if you have a prop sitting centered on the x-axis and you don't wanna run it unsteady, you just give it rotor and an RPM, it will run it basically using the regular old VLM methods, but it's turning it each time. So it's a little bit different than uh, trying to run the unsteady case. So one of the things that uh, you'll find can be just a little bit aggravating is that you don't see dash unsteady in here anywhere. Um, but that's one of the things that you call to do an unsteady run. And in fact, if, um, if you bring up something like open VSP and, um, let's see if I have some of my VSP demos here. Um, well, Anyway, so let's say for this test aircraft, uh, we've got it all set up. 
and we wanted to run VS Piero. And um, let's just hit uh, Launch Solver. I don't really want it to do that. I'm going to kill it. But what I want to point out here is this first line. We can only see part of your screen. You can only see part oh, of it. Oh, never mind, you're fine. Sorry. Okay. Um, did it come back then? It was my problem. Oh, that's okay. Um, so this first line here where you can see uh, the path and everything else, it kind of stretches all the way over here. That you can copy and paste into... The command prompt and that's where you can get you know this big chunk so you can tell it you know omp8 unsteady and make it run unsteady so this is handy when you don't want to use the default application for unsteady cases that are available to you uh something like you know choosing rotating blades that will automatically call unsteady set up the groups file set up the rotor files all that stuff is done through the gui but that's not the only thing that VS Piero is capable of. So, for example, uh, if I bring my notepad editor up, I'm not sure if I still have the, um, the example file in here. It would be kind of neat if I did. Um, pity. Anyway, uh, if you set up an unsteady case, namely uh, for something like these time steps, number of time steps, you're calling it and giving it unsteady groups. Down here in this input file, you can also put actuator disks in here. And because some folks asked about some demonstrations of, say, the dynamics and some other uh, operating modes, I'll get into that just a touch. And uh, I've got some videos pre-saved to show you what the solution looks like with these options turned on. Um, so in, in a case like that, where you want to run kind of these, um, the, the stuff that you can't really get to in the GUI, you have to set it up through these input files, but you can do it and it's relatively simple to do. So for example, in a uh, dropped pod case, which we can take a quick look at in a moment, you'll see that the structure of the groups file is such that you give it either a fixed group or you just name it whatever, tell it however many groups you have, how many components are in here, and you can find out what components are what by creating a degengeom file and then loading up in the viewer. And that will tell you what component belongs to what. So you have geometry is fixed. That's either zero for false, one for true. Uh, same thing for rotor. And the thing that uh, I found out recently from talking to Dave is that geometry dynamic actually has four options. It's false, it's dynamic, and you can prescribe the motion here. You can give it periodic which is dynamic equals two, or you can do full dynamics, which is three. And so that's where some of this stuff where your mass and your moments of inertia and everything start coming into play. And it, it, can, it can make some interesting things. So in this case, you, you see I've given it acceleration of, um, of negative G in feet per second squared. And then same thing for down here. I've made extra stuff that tells it that it's fully dynamic and... Um, so we've got a wing, and in this case, two pods that are allowed to just free fall and use their aerodynamic properties to iterate on where they are in space. So it's kind of a neat uh, demonstration. So I guess in that vein, you know, I've kind of talked a little bit about how you would set up the inputs for that. Um, there's this angle max value that gets read into periodic motion with dynamic equals two where you can give it the angle rate and the angle max, where it will oscillate back and forth between those uh, according to the described velocity. And so I think, are my videos in here or are they somewhere else? I think, yeah, some of them are in here. So let's come down and I'll see if I can't play some of these MP4 videos and show you a few results. So. This one um, is kind of fun. So this is an example of, say, what happens when you put actuator disks in front of two bodies that are fully dynamic. So I've got a tail back here and a wing. And originally, if I uh, crank up the playback on this to go much faster, let's take this up to like 3x, I think is what 
works reasonably well. So you see it kind of pitches down because it's getting started. The wakes haven't really blown over the tail. But as it gets further and further developed, it starts to pitch itself up, and the whole thing tries to take off. And I haven't prescribed any of this. This is just how the system is behaving all by itself. So you can see that the blowing starts to get a little stronger as the angle of the neck increases. Like, it does some wild stuff. And what was kind of surprising is that the actuator discs that I attached to the wing in, say, OpenVSP, carried through. Like, it's following the wing. So it's kind of neat that the actuator discs maintain their position relative to this lifting surface. So that was one example where I both prescribed actuator discs in a fully dynamic simulation and gave it wakes and a tail and let this thing just kind of fly through space and see what happens. Um, another one here uh, will run uh, some lifting rotors and, again, try and speed this up so that it's not so... Uh, slow to watch but you can watch how as the wakes develop from the lifting surface and from these um, lifting rotors that they all start to interact so you can see this kind of getting pulled down and pulled in the wakes back here are getting ingested and tossed together with uh, these pushing rotors and some of these others are um, just kind of out here doing their own thing but you know there's not enough you know, thrust necessarily to keep this entire body aloft. So you can see that these wakes are starting to kind of nest up on themselves and they're, they're kind of, they're not getting out of the way and trying to lift this thing off the ground yet, partially because uh, these rotating bodies are rotors and they're not allowed to be fully dynamic at this point. And so um, another one would be this periodic motion. And because I prescribed the origin vector for these components or this group to be about the nose or the leading edge center of this wing, the whole system is rotating about that. But if you wanted, you could, of course, set it at the center of gravity of these two. And, um, and again, you know, you get this oscillatory motion, which is handy because you'll find a lot of example cases in things like overflow or uh, other CFD codes to where it uses periodic motion to try and see... Uh, if it can accurately and repeatedly predict, say, a stall angle. Um, so being able to control periodic motion gives you something to compare to and uh, runs the dynamic cases for you like that. And then the final one that I'll show here is, uh, is dropped pod. And so as you can see, you know, the wing is fixed, it's doing its thing, but these two are um, individual components and watch what happens. You know, we said that body geometries, at least from a degenerate sense, don't have wakes and don't contribute to lift or drag, but they do contribute to moment. And that's kind of what's happening here is that this thing has its moments of inertias and stuff set up kind of poorly, that the tail isn't doing a good enough job of keeping this thing straight. And it just, the time step is too big and it winds itself up and just kind of tosses itself into oblivion and then returns a not a number because the run fails. But it's still kind of cool to watch to see that, you know, VSP Aero has this capability to do six DOF, unsteady, effectively free dynamics or even prescribed motion. Like, it's awesome to see how far VSP Aero has come, uh, even in the last year or two, that we can run these kinds of simulations. Um, so, uh, you know, for anyone that's interested, I made all these videos very simply using the FFmpeg um download and uh, where you can go in the viewer you click on save as and then movie so there is a, a small bug about where the file paths all go but if you run just an unnamed new open vsp geometry and then to get the vsp arrow analysis from that and run it unsteady or or whatever you can then go in and then save the movie and it will write out all the PNGs. It'll build the, the movie for you. And that's how I made all of these. So if you need an interesting demonstration or just something for fun, um, that's how it's accomplished right now. So uh, those are just a few examples of some of the dynamic uh, body motion that's capable in VSP Aero right now. Um, and so hopefully that was a, a sufficient demonstration for, for everyone there that, that wanted one.